if we look to the answer as to why for so many years we achieved so much, prospered as no other people on earth, it was because here in this land, we unleashed the energy and individual genius of man to a greater extent than has ever been done before. Freedom and the dignity of the individual have been more available and assured here than in any other place on earth. The price for this freedom at times has been high, but we have never been unwilling to pay that price. Those who say that we're in a time when there are no heroes, they just don't know where to look. The sloping hills of Arlington National Cemetery with its row upon row of simple white markers, bearing crosses or stars of David, they add up to only a tiny fraction of the price that has been paid for our freedom. Each one of those markers is a monument to the kind of hero I spoke of earlier. Their lives ended in places called Bellow Wood, the Argonne, Omaha Beach, Salerno, and halfway around the world on Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Porkchop Hill, the Chosin Reservoir, and in a hundred rice paddies and jungles of a place called Vietnam. Let that be understood by those who practice terrorism and prey upon their neighbors. As for the enemies of freedom, those who are potential adversaries, they will be reminded that peace is the highest aspiration of the American people. We will negotiate for it, sacrifice for it. We will not surrender for it now or ever. We are Americans. Good morning. Good morning. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for the opportunity we have this morning to be free, free citizens of our nation. We thank you, Father, for the sacrifices that have been made by uh, this ship's company and the family members who, who gave so valiantly of themselves in our nation's war to gain freedom. Father, we ask your blessing to be upon us this beautiful day and those who have traveled from, from great distances to be a part of this. Send your blessing, Lord, we ask you, and we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Now we're going to have the posting of the colors as they come up. Sonia is going to lead us in the national anthem.
can you see I'm the dawn's early light Was so proudly revealed At the twilight's last gleaming These broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet. Allegiance to the flag, the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we have a poem that was written by John Dale and it's entitled, A Toast to the Flag. Here's to the red of it. There's not a thread of it, no, nor a shred of it, in all the spread of it, from foot to head. But heroes bled for it, faced steel and lead for it, precious blood shed for it, bathing in red. Here's to the white of it, thrilled by the sight of it. Who knows the right of it, but feels the might of it, through day and night. Womanhood's care for it, made manhood dare for it. Purity's prayer for it keeps it so white. And here's to the blue of it, beauteous view of it, heavenly hue of it, star-spangled dew of it, constant and true. Diadem gleam for it, states stand supreme for it, liberty's beam for it brightens the blue. And here's to the whole of it, stars, stripes, and pole of it, body and soul of it, oh, and the roll of it, sun shining through. Hearts in accord with it, swear by the sword for it, thanking the Lord for it, red, white, and blue. We're now going to have the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now every year we read a poem that was written by a shipmate. And it was dedicated to his fellow shipmates, especially the ones who we're talking about today, the ones that have left us in the last year, since January. That was Gil Labud, Labuddy, and the title of this poem is I Told the Bell. I told the bell. Its voice rang clear. Where are the men who are not here? And each of us remembered one a special friend, a mother's son. These were the men who sailed the gem. Our hearts tell us, remember them. These are our friends, forgotten not. They sailed the seas, some ran the slot. And some survived the war till now. It is for these that now we bow. Each man a friend, a shipmate true some now at rest beneath the blue. We bow our t heads and dry our tears for those we've lost throughout the years. 
We'll meet again at journey's end. Until that day, so long, my friend. Columbia, the Navy's gem. Its men served well, remember them. We'll meet again on distant shore when life is done and our duties o'er. Sonia. This is a bell ceremony that we read every year as we remember those who've gone. This again was written by a shipmate, Jim Gosnell. We are here again this year to celebrate the service of men and women to the United States Navy, our Navy. Our Navy has a history written large for all to see. It is a roll call of sailors, ships, and battles proud enough to honor the flags of a score of nations. Yet, it is a history of a Navy unique to the stars and stripes alone. As memorable as the roll call of ships may be, it is the memory of those who manned them that stirs our hearts. Step aboard the gray, lifeless hulk of any decommissioned ship, close your eyes and hear the hollow echo of your footsteps. After a few minutes of this disturbing tranquility, you'll yearn to hear the clank of chipping hammers, the shrill of a bosun call over the general announcing system, and the clatter of feet hurtling down a ladder. For it is the crew that makes a ship a living being. It is, as it always has been, and always will be. Our history is a saga of men, Navy men, numbered by the words, they that go down to the sea in ships and do business in great waters. And what has this business been for over 200 years? Listen to our history. I have not yet begun to fight. Don't give up the ship. We have met the enemy and they are ours. Damn the torpedoes, full speed ahead. You may fire when ready, Gridley. Sighted sub, sank same. These are the laconic words of a Navy of men who wrote these 200 plus years of history with the actions which make these phrases memorable. This business in great waters was then as it is today, quote, providing for the common defense and securing the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Those are words from the Constitution. Early in our history, kings and pirates alike learned that one does not trifle with the American flag, not with impunity. In World War II, we taught that lesson to tyrants in words of thunder on a battleground that numbered all the seven seas. And we taught ourselves, out of the wreckage and ashes of Pearl Harbor, that we must always be ready to teach that lesson again, lest others forget, lest we ourselves forget. For over 200 years, there has been a cost, oftentimes a painful burden associated with the business done in great waters. We have always, as those are doing today, gone in harm's way on a moment's notice because 
Only slavery is cheap. Freedom has a far greater price attached. For the price of freedom, the price of America's sovereignty, is a ledger written in the blood of shipmates. Tell me, what were the names? What were the names? Did you have a friend on the good Reuben James? Overdue from patrol, presumed sunk. Aircraft down, pilot did not eject. The Secretary of the Navy regrets to inform you. Has the price been worth it? As we celebrate the greatest Navy known to man, so does our nation. The ledger balances. They are the screening reports for the ship of state, which is our flagship. For them, there is never a safe haven or a journey's end. Only deceptively calm stretches of sea. There may be storms ahead, shoal water and the enemy hull down on the horizon. There may be a holiday routine aboard the flagship, but for the screen escort, the orders do not change. Protect the flagship at all costs. The watch standards may change, but the orders remain the same. They are the current generation of watch standards on their longest voyage, being logged in its almost 250 year volume. Let us pause and pay homage to those shipmates whose feet have trod the decks before us and whose bones are left beneath this wake. May others say of us as we say of them. They have fought the good fight. They have run the course set before them. They have given their all. They have kept the faith. The toll of the ship's bell reminds us of the reverence we owe to our departed shipmates and to those who guard the honor of our country upon the sea, in the air, and upon foreign soil. Let us, who gather here together, not forget our obligations, and in silence, let us breathe a prayer for our absent shipmates. This past year, we have lost several people. Uh, Edwin G. White, Ralph Cianelli, Donald Madison, Henry Sawicki, Nick Sharish, B.C. Wilborn, Walter Tichnell, and family members. Edith Seaton, wife of Robert Seaton. Betty Laney, widow of Robert Laney. Mary Thorez, wife of John Thorez. Muriel Dodge, widow of Richard Dodge. Michelle Cianoli Steltz, daughter of Ralph Cianelli and sister of Debbie Robinson. Nancy Shiloh Duncan, daughter of Warren Shiloh and sister of Mary Shiloh Gray. Thank you.